This is Daily Armenia, Civil Net's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. The spokesperson for Russia's foreign ministry has blasted Armenia for its increasing turn to the West, warning that an attempt to sit on two chairs will not end well for anyone. Decisions in recent weeks by senior Armenian officials, including Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, to snub Russia-led summits and instead deepen ties with the United States, European Union, and Ukraine are all links in a chain of enslavement, Maria Zaharova told reporters in Moscow yesterday. Apparently, the Armenian authorities have forgotten that the country's welfare is largely based on the benefits it receives from cooperation with Russia and membership in the Eurasian Economic Union, she added. Continuing, Zaharova once again lashed the West for what she characterized as meddling in the region, laying blame for Yerevan and Baku's failure so far to reach a peace deal squarely on Washington and Brussels. The West, whose plans with regard to Ukraine have completely failed, has now grabbed onto Armenia with the same beastly grip trying to tear Armenia away from Russia, she charged. Meanwhile, in Yerevan yesterday, Pashinyan doubled down on his decision last month to diversify Armenia's defense relations, telling lawmakers it is now Armenia's policy to look for other security partners. Nonetheless, the prime minister again insisted he is not considering withdrawing Armenia from its defense arrangements with Russia. And in Washington yesterday, a senior U.S. diplomat told lawmakers there's no chance of business as usual between the United States and Azerbaijan until it shows it is engaging in peace talks with Armenia in good faith. To that end, Assistant Secretary of State James O'Brien confirmed the State Department does not intend to submit a request to the White House to waive restrictions on U.S. government assistance to Azerbaijan under Section 907, a measure limiting aid to the country. What that may mean in practice is the drawdown of many of Washington's aid programs in Baku. In addition, O'Brien gave some of the strongest indications yet by any U.S. official that the United States is open to sanctioning Azerbaijan for further noncompliance with calls for the non-use of force, saying he was committed to a willingness to use sanctions if other methods don't work. In a lengthy statement today, Azerbaijan's foreign ministry castigated O'Brien's remarks as one-sided, biased, counterproductive, baseless, and unacceptable accusations that undermine peace and security in the region, and said they call into question Washington's role as a mediator between Yerevan and Baku. You can find our full write-up on O'Brien's remarks on civilnet.am. In other news, Ogun Samast, the man convicted of killing the Armenian-Turkish journalist Harant Dink, was released today on parole after 16 years in prison. Samast's early release for good behavior has prompted a fresh round of outrage in Turkey's beleaguered opposition, with the head of a leading opposition party decrying the development as marking the end of conversations of justice in the country. A number of human rights organizations, journalists' unions, and Kurdish groups have also condemned Samast's release. In an editorial, Agos, the bilingual Armenian-Turkish newspaper that Dink founded, said a dark atmosphere similar to the one that led to Dink's murder still prevails in our country. Samast gunned down Dink in broad daylight in Istanbul in 2007, sparking a massive wave of protests across Turkey and drawing widespread international condemnation. Samast was sentenced to life in prison, but the sentence was later reduced to just under 23 years as he was a minor at the time of Dink's slaying. Before his murder, Dink received a number of death threats from Turkish ultranationalists and was also prosecuted three times for denigrating Turkishness under Turkey's controversial Article 301. You can also check out the latest episode of CivilNet's weekly Insight series. This week, host Eric Hakopyan provides fresh updates on the dozens of Armenians held in detention in Azerbaijan and breaks down Parliament's move this week to subpoena Nagorno-Karabakh President Samvel Shahramanyan for information on the 2020 war. The full broadcast is up now on our website and YouTube channel. And finally, the CivilNet number of the day is 150,000. That's the number of grenades Armenia has reportedly purchased from India as part of the latest arms deal between the two countries, according to India's Aerospace Defense News, which first reported the news yesterday. The Armenian government has so far not commented publicly on the matter, and CivilNet has not been able to independently verify the report. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.